Alright, welcome to episode number 4 of my quest system series. Today's episode will be very short because we will just add some enums, structures and finally our master quest class so that in the following part we can extend our quest logic and add some widgets to display our current quest. To start let's go to our blueprints folder, right click and create a new folder that will be called enums. Open that up, right click and under blueprints we will create a new enumeration that will be called e underscore quest categories. Double click and in here you can add all the different categories that you want to have for your quest. So the common ones are main quest and side quest. But you can also add something like events if you want to have such things. When you're done hit save, close it and let's create another one. That one will be called E underscore goal types. Double click. And the first one will be custom. In here we can set up some kind of templates for our quest. You might know this from other games where you have certain types of quests that always reappear like quests to hunt monsters or to find an item. If it's none of that quest, we will select custom here and now we can set up some templates here. First one will be hunt quest. Another one can be a quest to find someone or an object. And the last one could be to talk to an NPC or something. So just type in hunt, find and talk. Then we can save, close it and add the last enumeration that we'll need that you can call e underscore regions or areas which was actually suggested in the comments so we set it up that there are different areas and if you complete a quest of a certain area your prestige there will increase so that you might be able to accept more quests in that area or something like that double click open that up and now you will have to think of region names I guess I would just type in names from the Pokemon regions so Kanto, Yoto, and Sinnoh, doesn't really matter, then save and close it. After that we can come back to our blueprints folder and add another subfolder called structures. And here let's create a new structure called S underscore quest reward. So here we will store all of the information about what a player receives when he completes the quest. First one will be the experience that he gains. That will be an integer. And the next one will also be an integer and will be the prestige points. Or if you have some kind of currency system, also you could add money here. Certain types of items that the player can get but I would just leave it like that, then close it, create another structure called s underscore goal location, double click. So that will be used for our minimap to determine in which direction our player has to move in order to reach the current goal of his quest. First one we will add a boolean called has location. So maybe sometimes you don't want to give the player information about where he has to go and he has to find that out by himself. Then you would uncheck that and then we'll add a new variable that will be the location. Of course only used if that boolean is set to true and it will be a vector. Save it and we will need two more structures. The first one will be s underscore goal info. Double click. Here we will store all of the information for the separate goals of a quest. So we could start with the type and search for e underscore goal types. Add another boolean called custom goal question mark. That will be a boolean. Let's actually check that by default. 
add a new variable called goal text, which obviously will be a text. Then we will add an additional name. So that's just a text that will be used to build our kind of templates. So for example, when your type is hunt, you could for the additional name type in the name of the monsters and we will set it up that the goal text will be generated according to that additional name information. Then let's add another integer called amount to hunt. So that will of course only be used if our type is a hunting quest. And we will come in here later and also add the class of the enemy to hunt, but we didn't create that yet, so we cannot do that now. Then we'll add a new variable, which will be the goal location. And the type of that will be s underscore goal location that we just created. Add a new variable called update quest description. So after some goals you want to update the description of the whole quest after it was completed because there was some kind of change in the story. Make that a boolean and then add another variable called updated description which will be a text. Finally we need one more variable and that are the following sub goal indices. Make that an integer and an array. That will just define which new sub goals we have to complete when we finish this one. Then we can save it and close our s underscore goal info. And the last structure will finally be s underscore quest info. That will contain all of the structures we created before which means that the creation of the other three structures is completely optional, but it's much better for organizing purposes, I think. So let's open our quest info now. And first we will add a name for that quest, which will be a text. Then we need the category, which will be an E underscore quest categories. Another text called description. Then the region associated with that quest. So meaning where does it take place and that will be an E underscore regions. After that we will need a completion reward. Meaning what does the player receive when completing that quest. The type of that will be S underscore quest reward. Add another variable that we can name suggested level. So the level the player should have reached to be able to complete that quest. Make that an integer. And we will need a difficulty. We can make that one float. So later we can display that in a progress bar or something like that. And finally, the most important thing, which will be the sub goals of that quest. Make that an S underscore goal info array. Now we can hit save, close it, and that's everything for our enums and structures. Now let's go back to our blueprints, create a new folder called actors. So all of our blueprints that won't be characters. In here create a new folder called quest actors. Open that up. And here we will create a new blueprint class. Parent will be actor called bp underscore master quest. Open that up. Go to the event graph and let's add some variables here. The first one will be the quest info of the type s underscore quest info. Let's also put that in a category called quest information. Another variable will be the starting sub goal indices. That will be an integer array 
and we can also put that into our quest information. So if we have the elements 0 and 1 in our starting sub goal indices array, we will start with the first and the second subquest of that at the same time. Compile and save. So that two variables we can change in all of our children classes, but we also need some other variables that we don't want to be changed in the children classes. So add another one called current goal indices and let's put that in a category called do not touch so we know that we should not modify them in our children classes another variable will be called current goals or current sub goals whatever you like make that an s underscore goal info array and also put that in do not touch and then we need two more first a current hunted amount for our hunting quests make that an integer not an array and put that in do not touch as well and finally we will need a selected sub goal index also put that in, do not touch, compile and save. Then we will need to set up a default value for our starting sub goal indices because currently if it's empty we would start with no sub goal. So let's add an array element which we will just leave at zero, meaning that when we start our quest the first sub goal will be element zero of our sub goals array then compile, save, and there are some functions that we need. First one will be called update subgoals. We will drag in the current goals, clear it. Then drag in current goal indices and launch a for each loop. Drag in our quest info, break that, expand it, and get from our subgoals array add the array element and what we get from the array we will add to our current goals array. When our loop is completed we will just return. Then let's add another function called setup starting goals. First let's clear our current goal indices. Then we will set our current goal indices and to do that you can also hold ALT and drag that in. And we will connect our starting sub goal indices. Finally call update sub goals and afterwards return. We will need another function called go to next sub goal which will have an output called success. Here let's get our current goal indices, then search for max, max of int array, and we will add 1 to the max value. For that check whether it's less than or equal integer, and we will compare that with our quest info, break it, and get the last index of our sub goals. So that basically means is there any sub goal in our sub goals array after the maximum value of our current goal indices. Connect that to the comparison here and add a branch. If it's false, we will return with false. But if not, let's promote our max value plus one to a local variable called next index. Then let's drag in our current goal indices, clear that. and afterwards add to it. The element here will be our next index. Now we only need to call update sub goals again before we return with true this time. Compile and save that. That's basically everything for our BP master quest right now so we can close it. And in our actors let's create a new blueprint class of the type actor called 
bp underscore goal actor. For now we will just leave that blank. Later we will add some things so that we can display some kind of sprite on our minimap to show in which direction the player has to go. Let's add another blueprint class of the type actor called bp underscore quest manager. So as the name already says, that one will handle all of our quests, all of the one that we have currently, and all of the one that we already completed or that we failed. Open that up. And let's just set up some variables here. First one will be third person char. And the type will be third person character reference. Make that editable and expose on spawn because we will spawn that BP Quest Manager in our third person character. And then we will also need a reference to our main widget because we will need to communicate with that. That will be of the type main widget reference. Then compile, save. That's it for now. Close it. Now there are two things left. Let's go to our widgets, main widget, and add a variable here called quest manager of the type bp underscore quest manager reference, editable and exposed on spawn. Close the main widget. And finally go to our third person character to event begin play and let's add some space here right before we create the main widget. We will search for spawn actor from class. Class for that will be bp underscore quest manager. The third person char will be a reference to ourselves. And you can right click on the spawn transform, leave everything at zero. For the collision handling override select always spawn, ignore collisions. After we spawned our quest manager, let's promote that to a variable called quest manager ref for reference. Then we can create the main widget and connect our quest manager reference to the input quest manager. And then let's move over the update level and everything behind that. Drag in the quest manager reference and set its main widget reference to our main widget reference. Then we can hit compile, save and that's everything for this episode. See you in the next one.